In this video, we're going to talk about how to get the history of an item and how to work with your revision history in your Azure DevOps server. Now, one advantage of version control systems is that you can look back in time to get detailed information about what changes have been made to your files. So Azure DevOps allows this historical data to be maintained and related to every version of every file that has ever been checked in. And often when you look over the history of a file, a folder, or a branch, you're trying to solve a problem or answer a question. And so what we can do here, we're looking at a sample app that I have created. It's checked in and it has some revision history. We're going to come over to our source control explorer and for my sample project, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to choose view history. Now this is gonna show me the change set numbers and the change sets work by project. So if you have a big project and you've checked many different code items in there, then you may have several different change sets all relating to various projects that you've housed underneath there. Here you can see my commit messages, the timestamps, and if you're working as a group, you're able to see the user who, who did this change. We're also able to see this same information if we come over here on the website in the web interface and under repos, right, we can see our repos, we can click on change sets, and here we can see all of the change sets for everything that's happened in this particular project, which is named examples. So some of these pertain to the particular code that I was looking at, some of them pertain to other items that we've worked on inside of examples. So this is what I was referring to when I said everything kind of congeals together under one project. So if you have multiple items all checked in, in this case, if we go back and look at our source control explorer, right, I have a couple of different code projects all under examples, then our history is all maintained together. Now, a change set is a permanent part of the history and our, our version controlled items cannot be undone or removed. However, we can roll back the effects of one or more change sets. So if something has happened, let's say a teammate checked in something broken, or we suddenly realized we were doing something that we didn't wanna do, we checked it in, we can roll that back and undo that. So the first thing that we want to do is identify which change set do we want to go back to. So for this example, let's say I want to get rid of this change set here, which added the user prompt for name and print. Now, one of the things I want to show you here is sometimes we're not sure what exactly has changed in a change set. So we can actually right click on this and we can go to change set details and that will open the change set details over here on the right. We can see which files were changed. And then if we open up, in this case, program.cs, double click, it will give you a side-by-side -side comparison. So this over here on the left was the original. Over on the right, everything marked in green is a change that relates to this particular change set, right? And we call this a diff. And so looking at the difference between two files. Now, if this is the change that we want to remove, then we want to roll back. So I'm gonna right click on 21 and I'm going to roll back entire change set. And now if we go look at our program.cs, it looks like it should look um, what happened prior to change set 21. And now we can pick up where we left off. It does not change our history, and so if I make a change and check in, it's gonna become change set 22. And just what happened in 21 is like it never happened. So right now it is showing us what the project looked like from the change set that we rolled back. If we decide we want to keep it this way and proceed from here, uh, we can click roll back. We can also decide at any time that we just want to get specific versions of our code. So you can always right click and go um, get this version on any change set for your project. If you need to get certain versions, we can also do a compare 
and compare um, particular change sets, um, look for things by dates or by labels, and so that we can go back and review, and that will give us uh, a diff of what has changed. In this case, we can see the program.cs, there was an edit, something has changed, and we can see the diff of what happened inside of that history item. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video are shelve sets. So for various reasons, sometimes you need to set aside some or all of your work that's in progress. So shelf sets are particularly useful if we need to stop work for maybe an interruption, if you have a pending change, it's not ready for check-in, but you need to work on a different task and you really don't want those two items being caught up in the same check-in, right? So you just kind of want to put this one away for a little while, you can shelve it. Um, if you're collaborating and you have pending changes that aren't ready for check-in, but you want to share them with another team member, or if you're doing a code review or backup process with your employer or where you work, these are also good reasons to create a shelf set. So let's say I have updated my program.cs and I've added some code for something I'm working on, but again, I need to work on something else and I don't want that to wait uh, till I have all of these items finished before I can check in. And I don't wanna check in things that are half finished. So I just wanna shelve this for now and keep it for later. So over in my pending changes window, I see this shelve option. And so I can enter a shelve set name, whatever you wanna call it. Decide if you wanna preserve your pending changes locally. Now this is selected by default. When the checkbox is selected, your pending changes, including the comment and the related work items list or anything like that that you're working on, are not removed from the workspace. So if you want to clean your workspace and work on another task, you'll want to uncheck preserve pending items locally. Then you can click shelve. And now you can see my code was removed and I didn't check anything in. If I go look at the history or if I go look at the web interface, right, for our change sets, I only see my latest rollback. I don't see anything about a shelf uh, set that I've made here in change sets. You'll find these under shelf sets. So here's the pending items that I created. Here's the code that I was working on, right? It's still all saved and updated on the server. So if I'm coming back to an item that I shelved and I need to find it, we come to our pending changes window under actions and we need to find shelf set. And so it's going to pull up, you know, are they mine or um, are there any items that I need to, to use to filter this? Here is my shelf set named pending items. If I double click it, I get this uh, shelf set details window here and it shows me the files involved and everything about it. If I'm ready to work with this uh, shelf set, I can unshelve my changes and it'll say, do you want to restore your work items, check in notes, preserve it on the server? Yes, I want to do both of those things, so I'll unshelve it. So now my code is back the way that I thought it should be from that shelf set, I can continue to work on this item. And then when I am ready, I can then check that in as its own change set. So I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit about how to work with the history, do rollbacks, look at the differences of files that you've checked in, as well as be able to shelve any changes and pull those back out when you're ready to work with your files.